Hello and welcome along to a crucial double header from this FM20 story, A Wandering Dork with me, Daniel. It's Season 5, Episode 5, and today we reach the midway point in the League 2 season. After a promising start, things are starting to fade quickly, and we've got a lot of work to do to stay in promotion contention. Of course, it wasn't our aim at the start of the season. We were just looking for a top-half finish and a playoff push, but unfortunately, after getting to the top early on, we're always keen to try and stay up there. It's not been the best little run in the last month or so, so we will go and have a look at that before the episode. We've got a double header at home to mid-table Gillingham and then we go away to play off rivals Wrexham. We have got the January transfer window ahead so we can look forward to that with a bit of news to come. Hopefully that'll come in the next episode. But in the meantime, a massive thank you for your continued support with the series. I really do appreciate it greatly. If you've missed any of it so far, you can catch up in the eye above. There's links to this series, our head coach story and our match day vlogs from my podcast as well. And if you are enjoying the series, please do put a thumbs up on the video. It makes such a difference to the performance of it. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe for daily FM20 content from two long-term stories every day at half four. But let's go and have a look at the recent results, see how we've dropped off the top of the table, and what on earth we're doing back down towards the top seven. We're really getting chased down a bit here. Only one win since the end of October, a pretty disastrous spell in truth. You're with me for the double header against Spurs and Colchester, which was followed up with two more League Two victories. Firstly, a 2 0 win at home to York, both strikers in the goals and getting one apiece there, and then Whitaker with a brace at home to Scunthorpe before the dreaded run started without a win. So we've had just one win since then, not at home to Tranmere. Other than that, it's been pretty poor across the board. We had a 2 0 draw away to Crawley, Parkhouse and Whitaker again with the goals, a 1 0 draw at home to Mansfield, Terrell Whitaker with a goal in that one too. Then in the FA Cup, it was Whitaker to the rescue again, this time against Wrexham, who we'll be facing today. In the Leasing.com trophy, we we got through despite a draw in our final league game. We also lost the penalty shootout there. Sam Sherrin with an early goal for our backup side. A few players getting some good fitness there. A 0-0 draw followed away at Oldham before a 1-0 defeat at home in the replay against Wrexham. Out of the cup at the first round wasn't the best way to start the season and we followed that up even worse in League 2. It was a 3-1 defeat this time away at Shrewsbury. The first time we conceded 3 in a game since September. Unfortunately Keelan O'Connell's early equaliser wasn't enough as we failed to stop them at the back. After that, we went back to our old goalkeeper, Grant Smith coming in for a 2-1 win against Tranmere. Morsley with a late header after Terrell Whitaker gave us the lead, but even then it wasn't a convincing performance. And it was followed up with a defeat for our backup side, this time in the Leasing.com trophy. A backup team and we did okay in the end, but we weren't able to compete with Wolves. And then against Crew, we got a draw last time out. Not the best result, but we conceded that late goal. Otherwise, it would have been back-to-back -back league wins and a bit of confidence going back through the club. We've also tried to talk to the lads in a team meeting we got it horrendously wrong and they were even worse off so I'm a little bit concerned about where we are at the moment I feel like we could drift if we're not careful this year so it could be a big January despite the dressing room atmosphere still being good we have won a game including a friendly as well and the managerial support is still excellent and that's of course the most important thing at this point so let's go and get into the first game a home to Gillingham it should be a winnable match but they've got some decent players and we're in woeful form so who knows what could happen in this one Gillingham back-to-back -back wins before this, managed by former Accrington number one John Coleman. He was a really good manager for them, leading them to promotion up to League One. And he's still there with them in the moment in real life, so it's going to be a difficult test in this game. We've gone back as strong as we can. With the exception of the goalkeeper, we have gone back to Grant Smith. We just don't look assured when Hoodart's in the team, so he's going to be relegated to the Cups for now. It means Grant Smith's in goal, Anthony and Simpson are the fullbacks, with Kieran Jones and Ashley Morsley in the middle. Moles and Smith in central midfield, Broom and O'Connell over on the wings, and then Parkhouse joined by Whitaker up front, both Parkhouse and Presley in long goal droughts. So let's go and get into this game today, see if we can get back to winning ways at home. We won against Tranmere before those back-to-back -back poor results, so let's hope we can get back to winning ways today. Well, it's a 4 2 3 1. We're going to get overrun in midfield again. Some really good players in this Gillingham side. All stopping goals are decent pro. Sheehan in central midfield is Gove over on the right wing. They've got Guthrie at left back as well. A sea of players and recognisable names. Something that seems to be a weekly occurrence at this level. We're going to tell the lads to do their best, and a few of them are motivated. So let's see if they respond in the first half. Hopefully, we can get ourselves a good three points. 
Well, this has been a pretty dull half. Half an hour gone, we're seeing the first bit of match action. Smith and Anthony playing it around in the left-back area. Out to Jones, and now Anthony goes long. Whitaker flicks on for Parkhouse. Could have ended the goal drought, but he never looked confident. Volleyed over the bar first time. And from inside the box, he didn't even test the keeper. Though we have still had two shots on target. Here's Moles to Parkhouse, the target man. Back out to Broom on the right wing. Can we create something special here? We just need a clear-cut chance. We've still been creating those. A few of them have gone missing, unfortunately. As I Connell tries to cross, it's blocked and away, but Anthony picks it up on the left. Into the box to Parkhouse, there goes the goal drill. Brilliant work from Parkhouse. He's gone a few without a goal and he looked confident that time. A tapping from three or four yards, exactly what he would have wanted. And Thomas Anthony put in a brilliant whip delivery in. He couldn't have asked for much better to finish. Five to the break, it remains 1-0. Simpson's book, so we'll get him to ease off tackles. And I've got to say, we have been picking up more yellows recently, despite no change at all to the tactic. And Gillingham starting to get shots on now, but we're in with Moles at the back post, over the top, done through one-on-one, -on -one, but unfortunately he put a good chance wide. Dominated the shots on target, but there's lots of highlights towards the end of this half, and now Chillingham coming forward on the right, his growth delivers, headed away as far as Edwards, and on the edge of the box he picks it up, and gets it out wide to McNamara again. Into Weber on March, straight as Smith with a header, a guilt edge chance for the away team there, but thankfully it's wasted and it's straight as Smith. He's got a chance to get it long downfield, they look really dangerous from crosses, and I guess knowing the way Accrington play in real life, John Coleman doing the same here with Gillingham. Anthony at left back intercepts and goes long. Parkhouse nods it down towards O'Connell. Whittaker's beaten the defender and he's on a book in two. He couldn't make a challenge for the life of him. And from 20 yards, Whittaker curled it towards the corner, but it drifted just wide of the keeper's near post. Simpson throws into Broom. We've got another chance here. Into Whittaker from the wide area. He edged just over, but it's all happening now. A brilliant finish to the half for both sides. We lead 1-0 and that's the crucial aspect but Gillingham still look a threat from crosses. Let's talk to the lads, encourage the team, just as Nick Haycock recommends. And as we get into the second half, we're cementing our place in the top three. Though if Wrexham beat us in the next game, that'll all change very quickly yet again. It's all stopping goal for Gillingham. Nearly 10 minutes gone in this second half. Poor kick out, which only finds Broom. Parkhouse holds it up, still doing well as a target man, waiting for the overlapping fullback. Over to Simpson, who's got a chance to cross. Two or three in the box if he can find them. It's a poor ball in and it drifts away towards O'Connell. He picks it up and goes wide to the left. Into the box, good effort here. It's the post. What's gone on there? It would look like a cross, but it suddenly swerved away and it beat the keeper at the near post. Unfortunately, it didn't beat the woodwork though. An hour gone, it remains 1-0. Changes afoot for Gillingham. They've made all three already at the hour mark and we're going to think about some changes ourselves, but everyone's playing pretty well at the moment. Well, 15 to go. Gillingham with a throw at right back. It's been such an even game in terms of the stats. I know most of the chances we've seen are for us, but Jones is having to defend again here and Anthony clears it long downfield. We just need a second to get rid of the threat. Well, flick on from Parkhouse towards Whitaker. In one on one, can he finish? Poor again. He's put it wide at the post. Really should have done better from that one. And with 15 to go, we'll make a couple of changes just to try and shore things up a bit tactically. So let's go to that tactic screen. They've got a number 10 on Gillingham, so we're going to put on a holding midfielder. That man's Matt Dolan. He'll replace Whitaker, just leaving Parkhouse up front on his own. Dolan will drop into that holding role, something he's pretty comfortable doing anyway. Defensive midfielder on defend. Just literally sit in front of that back four. There's no need for him to do anything more at this stage. We just need him to see out the game well. We're going to bring O'Connell off as well. He's not had the best game. Callum Marriott will come on for him. Harriet, sorry, who's been injured most of the year. And we'll just shuffle them back to the wide midfield roles. 4-1-4-1, nice defensive shape. Let's try and see out for the three points. Don't care how we do it at this point. It can be scrappy as you like. We've just got to get the result on the board. We really have been struggling with that recently. And I'd love to cling on for a 1-0 win. A clean sheet would almost please me as much as Parkhouse has lost possession up front but he does really well to win it back again finds Stefan Moles in the middle and he's composed gets it out to the Simpson the right back and we're able to try and build an attack again Moles back to Simpson who goes over the top Broom picks it up on the right wing into the box unopposed he's in one on one straight at the keeper Allsop had to do better there and put it away but unfortunately he's wasting another chance we've got Smith and Moles in midfield I'm going to give Moles a little rest at the end just freshen it up with Callum Wright and with three minutes plus stoppage time to go. We're also going to try and time waste a bit too. Just one minute plus stoppage time now. Time wasting all the time. Slow the pace down. No need to counter. Just hold our shape quite nicely. And we're going to make sure that we keep the ball as much as possible as well as keeping a more disciplined shape too. Let's get back into it. See if we can hang on for what will be a really crucial three points in League 2. 
There it is then, a crucial 1-0 win, a really poor performance to be honest, but Parkhouse ends a goal drought and we get three points, two wins in a row at home for us, and at Meadowbank we're starting to make it a fortress again, and we've also got a couple of players back from injury. Up to second place again, back ahead of Notts County, who did win again actually, MK Dons all the top three winning, Wrexham held at Walsall, fourth v fifth there, both of those draw in to stay behind us, but if Wrexham beat us in the second of today's double header, they could go above us on goal difference depending on on the result. So let's go and skip ahead to that after looking at what the media have said. We had a tight contest, we said it was an even game, but most importantly Parkhouse ends his goal drought and hopefully he'll continue his good run in the next match. We'll be back in a moment to face Wrexham away, certainly going to be a much tougher test. Well, back for game two, and we've got fitness tests as well. Cameron Archer just back from injury, but only limited to 45 minutes. Doesn't often make the bench now anyway, to be honest. Kieran Jones is fit. He's struggling for condition. Maybe think about bringing in Sam Sherring for him, but otherwise we might stick with the same 11. They've got a clean sheet, so I don't want to change the defence. There's lots of important clashes at the top in League 2 today. Notts County in third playing a tough game against Crewe. They're in 10th place and chasing the playoffs, so certainly not a home banker by any means. We've got MK Dons, the leaders, going away to 5th place Walsall, we're the runners up going away to 4th place Wrexham a really interesting day at the top of the table and we've got to get back to form away from home, Wrexham have unbeaten in 4 and have got 3 wins in that time as well we've never won in our head to heads against them either, so things aren't looking good at the early stages, but of course we can only do our best to get a result, so I think with Kieran Jones just passing his fitness test I'm going to stick with the same 11 and 18 so let's get straight into it with exactly the same squad, fingers crossed we can put in another good performance, well 4-4-2 for Wrexham, they're matching us up in this one, they've obviously beaten us in the FA Cup on a replay already this year so really strong performances against us so far and as well as facing them today we've got the return fixture in two games time so lots of games against Wrexham and we've really got to try and get the better of them they've got a really good front two in Liango and Jonathan Abika, both really strong players at this level and that's going to make things quite difficult for us today but let's encourage the lads and see what they can do Five minutes gone then, it's a throw in for Wrexham, first blood for them moving forward, we have had the only shot registered in this match but it must have been blocked or something, and McDonough to Angle, good goal, oh it's gone in, Grant Smith's led it in, I was about to say good save Smith, he would look like he was going to hold it, he's palmed it into the net, it's a really poor save, and unfortunately we trail 1-0. Another disastrous start on the road, so often the case this season, we've been losing goals galore away from home in recent months, and it looks like that trend's continuing today. The only shot on target for Wrexham and it was barely a pack pass but Grant Smith decided to palm it in and now Durney's got another chance to cross on the left, Simpson not managing to clear, into Obika, he heads just over, the front two both having early efforts and with 12 gone it's been a pretty awful start and it looks like our away woes will continue. As we go through this game of course let me know what we should do in January, we've got quite a bit of money in both the wages and the transfer budget and at this point I realise we probably need to spend it and not be quite so tight with our management. Moles picks it up on the left hand side back to Matt Smith on the edge of the box our first chance but Smith's been beaten to it and he's now picked up an injury to his ankle too only bruising so he should be able to carry on but I don't want to risk him for the weekend Grant Smith tips it over on Boxing Day what a disastrous festive fixture this has been certainly no cheer at this ground today certainly not in the away end anyway and with a quarter of the game gone we're trailing 1-0 and it's another set piece for the home side let me know where you think we need to improve the team I'm really not quite sure where we should go with this I'm still looking about bringing in better wingers who can drop back. I'm fine with Broom on the right, but on the left we haven't found a solution. And it may be one more striker which we were looking for in the last window, although Whittaker has been scoring goals for fun. I can see Parkhouse improving now too, so that is quite a nice sign for us. Or maybe do we go for that big goalkeeper again? Someone who'll save the shots like he's conceded today. Grant Smith costing us the points as Andrews runs unopposed. Where's the midfield? They've gone straight through him, and thankfully he's put it wide at the post. But we're down to third place, level with Wrexham, and two more goals and we'll be beneath them in the league. Right, we've gone to a positive mentality as we're not even laying a glove on them at the moment. Parkhouse heads away. Oh, they've not scored that. What a fantastic bit of luck for us. Offside flags up. I've no idea why. McDonough scores an absolute screamer. Again, Smith beaten in the middle of his goal. But thankfully, the linesman spared our blushes. No VAR at this level and I'm pretty glad because it didn't look offside. And at halftime, we trail 1-0 and we've only managed one shot on target all game. We're going to say we expect better. I'm not sure if we can do too much tactically at the moment. We've gone to 
to positive, so we'll see if that has an effect, and we may go more attacking later on in the match. Kieran Jones to the left back, Anthony, down the line to O'Connor, it's lovely little bits of football, but we're not creating those clear chances, something we've been doing all season long. Whitaker into the box though as I say that, Paul Cross and it's blocked out to the right back, McDonough hoofs it clear and he switched to the other flank, no pressure on Dernley at all, and we're getting caught out of position really easily here, this is not the best performance we've seen from the lads. You can see away from home why we're struggling, maybe I'll just drop the wingers back at that level because it doesn't seem like we're competing and the right backs just run through the whole team here McDonough back to Durney touchdown and shot Zach Durney doubles the lead for Wrexham and we started the second half just as we did the first with a woeful bit of defending and by losing midfield runners 2-0 Wrexham that's game over we're going to go attacking now while we're here we'll drop the wingers back and go to a more attacking mentality and hopefully we can just get crosses in early so back we go there the wingers playing in the wide midfield areas and away from home we've got to find a solution because things have just started going wrong the last two months an hour gone we've got to throw deep in our own half it really doesn't look good from that position but Morsley does well to get it back to Simpson he goes long downfield towards Parkhouse holds it up well and Whittaker's running off him decides to go all the way back to left back for some reason and then Anthony leaves it so O'Connell has to run back costing us more territory again Matt Smith tries to find Whittaker in the middle Smith's still struggling for fitness mind you Whittaker to Parkhouse so we've got a chance into Moles with a lovely back heel but his shot straight at Pete the Wexham goalkeeper and again it remains 2-0 pretty comfortably so let's go and make some changes for our poor performers Broom's had a poor game But I've got to think about fitness as well at this stage As we've got three games in five days over the Christmas break So Whittaker's been poor Aaron Presley's going to come on for him Moles has had a poor game as well Callum Wright on for him in central midfield And he'll be joined by Dolan who comes on for the injured Smith Those three changes made Let's get back into it And just see if we can nick a goal from somewhere Throw on the right hand side for Wrexham. Again the dominance continues. A beaker in the box. We've actually had more shots in this game. We've had the only clear cut chance. But Wrexham continuing to dominate aerially. And their angle forcing a save from Grant Smith again. He's got a poor match rating because of that goal he conceded. Which started it all off for us at the start of the day. And Jones gets to the left back for Wrexham again. They just look so comfortable and composed at 2-0. It's back to Pete the goalkeeper. Taking as long as he wants. No pressure on him whatsoever. And that's not preventing short goalkeeper distribution as Parkhouse picks it up in the middle. He finds Dolan and now O'Connell. Got Anthony at left back if he wants him, but instead goes back inside to Dolan, who looks for that through ball. It's a good one as well. Parkhouse with a clear-cut chance, and he's gone down as one, but he's put it straight at a keeper. And how many of those can we waste? Every single game without fail, we have more, and every single game, we don't take them. Even when we do win games and score goals, they're never from the clear-cut chances. It's getting so frustrating. I need Dale Southwell from the other save. He's doing a brilliant job for us with Halif. Here's Ryan Broom on the right hand side. Into Dolan again. We are starting to have an effect here. Over the top towards Presley. Can he end that goal drought? He can't. It's cleared away long downfield. And back into midfield for Falkenham. Wrexham there to the second ball first. They've done it every time in this match as well. And we're really struggling to lay a glove on them. Even when we do, we're missing clear chances. Parkhouse ended his goal drought in the last game. You wouldn't have been able to tell it from that finish there. And his match ratings dropped as a result as well. They just keep missing clear cut chances. My biggest bugbear with FM20 as a beaker does the same at the other end. Grant Smith makes the save and it's behind for a corner. Rickson with a chance to make it three. It's an in-swinging delivery to be taken by Andrews. The central midfielders controlled the game today, but Simpson does well to head that one away, only as far as Redmond on the edge of the box. He finds Falkenham 30 yards out. Plenty of men to choose from for him, and he goes back inside to Redmond yet again. They're just confidently keeping possession. They're not even too fussed about getting a shot away. Falkenham down the line to Andrews. They may have broken a defensive offside trap. Simpson managed just to get back and block the cross though but it only goes out for a Wrexham throw in 10 minutes to go there's nothing we can do we're just going to demand more from the lads but I think that's too little too late at this stage and it looks like we're going to fall to an away defeat again Grant Smith with a long kick downfield for us the last chance for us to at least get a consolation Callum Wright to Broom on the right and there's two men up there but instead goes back to Simpson long towards Parkhouse with two in the middle one of them's Presley who plays it wide a lack of confidence to take the shot on as it falls for Broom and cleared away Parkhouse makes a slide in challenge, one of those goal mouth scrambles yet again, but somehow it finds his way into the arms of the keeper, we just aren't taking chances at all at the moment and I've decided today that strike is the area to focus on, Presley coming forward again solo, brilliant work from him there, but again no confidence in the finish, puts it straight down the keeper's throat and you can tell he hasn't scored a goal for a while as Parkhouse blocks the goal kick out a bizarre emanation that is blocked out for a throw in, and Wrexham are going to finish off the game with a throw, a right back they've got time with James, just down the line 
Brian to McDonough there. There's no rush from them whatsoever. We tend to go, they know they've won it. Long ball downfield, it's up for a throw for us. The whistle will go as soon as it's taken, I'm sure. Anthony will be over there to deliver it, but it's a little bit too late to put the effort in. O'Connell plays a 1-2 with a throwing taker. Back inside to Matt Dolan, but the final whistle goes, we lose 2-0. And again, despite having a similar amount of shots, more of the clear-cut chances in the match, we waste them again and we continue to struggle in front of goal. We really need to sign a good striker in January. We've told the lads we're disappointed and most of them are motivated. Doesn't change anything about our striking though. We're missing chances galore even with good finishers. The composure's relatively good but it isn't making a difference whatsoever. Matthew Smith's injured just for a couple of days though. Maybe back for the Forest Green one in four days time. And then we've got to do it against Wrexham again. A tough run going ahead of the transfer window. And look at the message, Yandolo's there, getting one over on his former club. If you were watching the other series, the head coach, you'll know exactly why that's so frustrating. That's two days on a row for the Elish Yandolo. You have to go back and check out yesterday's for that one. For any of you following this series, then watching Yandolo in that game, you won't understand that that's the same player, because I can't work out how it is either. But let's go and have a look at the schedule. We've got a big January transfer window ahead of us. We can gamble and try and get in towards that top three, or we can just continue to manage the club carefully. In that case, we know we're going to probably fade away, but I don't know which option's the best at the moment. So we will come back some point around the end of January, maybe just the start of February, just to see who our signings have been, whether they can make an impact at the club, and hopefully guide us to at least the top seven, but arguably we'd like to stay in the top three. Three home games in a row after Forest Green, though, so a chance for us to get our home form on track still, and then we need to find a solution for the away game soon, but that gives us two or three weeks to do so. In terms of budgets, we've got a little bit remaining, loads of wage budget and a hundred grand on transfers so we can bring in two or three really good players we've just got to make sure our scouts can find them but if you did enjoy this episode and that mixed bag in those two games please do put a thumbs up on the video let me know in the comments what you think i can do on the road i've tried a midfield free i've tried bringing the wingers back none of it really seems to work do i need to dip into the transfer window maybe just stick to my guns and hopes it comes good of course there's so many options here but i think missing clear-cut chances is going to cost us regardless let me know in the comments what you think we should do in January should we take the calculator gamble on signings and what positions do you think we most need to strengthen for me I'm not quite sure out of two or three subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content for my two long-term stories this one will be back in two days time hopefully with some big January transfer news and then tomorrow we'll be back with the head coach as we're fighting relegation at our new club if you're not sure who we've joined or why then please do click back in the eye above to catch up I really am enjoying that series so much and I hope you enjoy watching it just as much. And finally, I'm part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews. The link to the match day vlogs are in the eye above. We had a recent one at an FA Cup tie, a brilliant game between Watford and Tranmere, and the following on that has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you to everyone for your support so far. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series. I really do appreciate it greatly. And I hope to see you next time for another big episode as we try and get back on track in the promotion race. <laughs>